As I'm sure you are aware, I do a lot of tool reviews on this channel. But it's not often I'm as excited about a new tool as this tool. I've wanted a battery only nailer for so long. I've been waiting for Makita to put one out now for four years. They still haven't done it, still doesn't look close. So, sorry Makita, I've jumped ship. I've gone Hikoki. Now Hikoki is Hitachi, or was Hitachi. Or if you are in North America, it'll say Metabo HPT, Hitachi Power Tools. So, oh, I've got to open it up. So here's the inside of the box. Now this is the multi-volt kit. So it comes with multi-volt batteries, which need a charge. A multi-volt battery means this is an 18-volt battery when you stick it on an 18-volt tool. Stick it on a 36 volt tool and it's a 36 volt battery. You just have twice as many amp hours for the, let me have a look there, for the 18 volt. 18 volt you'll get 5 amp hours worth of power and 2.5 and if you're running a 36 volt tool. Now this is a multi volt kit but it's not a multi volt tool or anything, it's, it's an 18 volt tool. So these are essentially 5 amp hour batteries, two 5 amp hour battery kit. Now the case will take three batteries, one on the tool and one in this corner, one in this corner. comes with a high speed charger, I think it's the fastest charger you can get for any 18 volt tools. Uh, does a 6 amp in like, what well, does these 5 amps in like 32 minutes or something, it's, it's very fast. Starts off with a blue light and then the blue light flashes and then it goes solid and then the green light comes on, something like that. It's three different stages so you know whether it's partially charged, whether it's 80% charged, that sort of thing. So you can use it in a hurry if you need it. it has a USB on the back there for charging your phone, etc. Oh, comes with a couple of Allen keys for getting into things. Just don't really have a home, so they'll get lost pretty quick. A pair of safety Googles. And the tool itself. Get this box out of the way. On the first iterations of this tool, it would say Hitachi here. And it would be in raised lettering made out of plastic. But they've changed the molds, got rid of that. And now it'll say Hikoki or Metabo, depending on what part of the world you're in. Now this is a brushless, gasless battery nailer. There ain't no gas. So that's very good. I guess if you were left handed you might, you're you going to chuck this on the other side because you can just attach it there. Now it's nice that it comes with that, a lot of nailers don't come with it and you've got to buy an extra one. You can buy bigger ones I do believe. So let's have a look at the features of this thing. Just here you have a physical safety lock, that's by physical, it, if you push it that way it just blocks the trigger from being pushed. So that's an ultimate safety thing. To turn it on you have to hold your finger down here for several seconds till the lights come on and you've got a battery indicator and a nail mode indicator now the nail mode indicator is an interesting one in this part of the world down here in New Zealand bump fire modes are banned on framing nailers they are only full sequential which means you have to first activate the gun by pushing down the safety nose and then activate the trigger to fire the nail, like so. And you have to go through that cycle for every nail. You can't just keep your finger on the trigger and go bang, bang, bang with the tip because nothing will happen. Well, I'm not a big fan of a lot of safety features on power tools, but personally, I've got no problem with this particular design for framing nailers. I don't think framing nailers should be bump mode because if you're going bang, 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 bang in a house and you hit there, and your fingers on that trigger that nail is going to miss that bit of wood and poor old Steve the plumber could cop it and then that's going to ruin everybody's day because you're going to have to take him to the hospital and he's probably not going to be too impressed so it's not a bad feature in my opinion as you may be able to see this gun doesn't look as fresh as it did in the shot a few moments ago those first few shots were filmed about six months ago um, so I've used this a fair bit since then, 
And now I'll show you some videos of me comparing it to my old Hilti nail gun. And I hope to get this video out a long time ago, but all the jobs I've used it on I haven't filmed. But we'll film one now and I'll show you some other comparisons and we'll just do some stupid things, see what it can do. I have my two nailers here and I'm going to fire about half a dozen 90mm nails into 96mm of Vitex hardwood. See which one does the best. They're both on their maximum depth setting. Taking a closer look you can see that the first couple of nails on each gun didn't go in all that well. This is the Hikoki on this side, Hilti on this side. So the first two on each one didn't go in so well, maybe a hard bit of wood through there. But then the next four on each one sunk basically all to about the same depth. So a very even test overall. Now the Hilti nailer did admirably well there, that's the GX90WF if you want to know, and the model number of the Hikoki is the NR1890DBCL. Usually this thing gives me no end of trouble. But in these tests it's done pretty good, it's had a couple of little niggles but nothing, nothing major. So I'll just tell you what I think of this tool quickly first. Handling wise, I think this gun feels nicer than the Hikoki. So this is a 7 volt battery 
and gas. One thing I really hate about it is this. I left that in one of the other shots in the video just to let you hear how loud it is and see how long it lasts. It does that after every single... Every, you don't even have to fire an nail, just every time the end gets depressed, off it goes. Now the amount of trouble I've had with this thing not firing and jamming and fluffing around on me, I've had it apart more than any other tool I've ever owned. It is has been a, a pig. I, I hate it. Um, but it did do quite well during the other test. It feels nice compared to the Haikoki. It just feels a bit nicer. Um, but it is quite a bit bigger. I'll just give the tripod a kick there. Just keep you on your toes. So yeah, it's... The Haikoki is shorter that way. It's shorter in height, um, but it's heavier. So the Hilti just feels that little bit nicer. But every time you open the case, it stinks of gas. It doesn't like to fire. Uh, it's just been a pig. And the tape on so many nails just jams up in here and the nails won't go down. And you've got to fire a nail, push it down, fire a nail, push it down, fire a nail, push it down. Just been a pain in the butt. The Hilti's given me so much grief over the years, I'll be happy to see it go. I've put a video of one example of it, um, upsetting me slightly, you might say, on the other channel. It'll be up in the top corner here. If you have a, want to check that out. Um, warning, it may contain some offensive language. So, if you're looking for a Hilti nail gun, this one will be online for sale soon. As for the Haikoki Nailer, what do I like about it, what do I not like about it? I prefer it overall over the Hilti, I'll say that straight off. A battery only, not having the gas, just, you know, makes it win in my opinion with just about nothing else, because uh, I just hate the gas cylinders, there's nothing worse than you run out of gas and you go over to the pass load box, you open it up, and it's full of nails, but no gas cylinders, they're all gone, they've disappeared somewhere and so you've then got to go off and find some gas which is a pain much more annoying than just charging a battery or chucking another battery on so in that regard alone the Haikoki wins hands down pretty much um, getting into tight places and that sort of thing maybe a bit easier in this department the nose sort of is fairly flush with the bottom here and everything it doesn't stick out quite as much. The Hilti you can sort of maybe get into a few better places with the Hilti. Power wise this is just as powerful as any gas nailer I've ever used. It's equally as powerful as the Hilti. They're both basically identical. They both seem to sink nails the same sort of depth. It's better than the pass load that I use at work which is a gas one also. This switch here I never use. It's kind of rather redundant. Um, it's only really necessary maybe if you're trying to keep it away from small hands or you're wanting to, I don't know, store it or you're just paranoid that somehow the button's going to get turned on and then the nozzle's going to get pushed and then the trigger's going to get pulled. Pretty unlikely. So I never, I just leave that open all the time. The on-off switch itself is a bit of a pig. It's very hard to see. It takes a few seconds to come on. And if you're outside and you pick it up, you, you can't really see those lights. You certainly can't see the green ones in there. They're just in such an awkward position. I look for the blue one, which is just the nail selection, bump fire or full sequential, which of course this doesn't have, so it's just got the one light and it's just always on when the tool's on. So I use the blue one rather than the green ones, the little battery indicator button. There we go. It's probably only the second time I've ever pushed it. Once again, it's in an awkward place to see outside, hopeless in the sun. So that's one annoying thing. You keep picking it up, you go to use it, and ah, oh, it doesn't work because you haven't got it turned on. So you've got to push it, and then you're sort of not sure if it's on because you can't see the light. But that's probably the the thing I hate about it the most. Well, the only thing I don't like about it, really. Um, the adjustment on here is fine. You've still got to use a tool if you have a block, but I haven't had one, so that's not a problem. Um, I don't know how many nails I've fired with it. A few thousand. 
but yeah, somewhere in the region of maybe 10,000. It doesn't require the same sort of maintenance, supposedly, that a gas one needs, which is good because I'm sick of opening up nail guns, especially that damn Hilti and cleaning it out and trying to get it going again. So if I never have to do that on this, I'll be super happy. So overall, I like it. No, I don't. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. The problem with these things is it makes it much harder to use a hammer, eh, when you're using these all the time. You forget how to use a hammer, probably. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. It's been a long time coming, I know. I know a lot of you have known I've had this gun for ages. But there we go. Finally done the review. So there you go, guys. I think it's shit hot. And the Hilti one will be moving on to a new home. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Which might be this. But it might not, so don't get your hopes up. I think it's shit hot. And the Hilti one is going in the bin. So there you go, guys. I think it's shit hot. So there you go, guys. It's shit hot on the scale of shit hotness.